Hey guys, Ken with Provectus Group. Today, I'm coming to talk to you about a much anticipated optic. It's the 507K from Hollison. Now, welcome back, and we are dealing with an unloaded firearm so the internet does not have to freak out. Before we get started, I wanted to give a big thank you to Gable Sporting Goods. Because of Gable's in Douglasville, Georgia, we were able to review this optic. They gave us a great deal on this. Go and check them out. Let's hop into the features really quickly. Now we're gonna run through these features very quickly. If you want a full detailed list, head to Hollison's website. So first thing that we're gonna talk about is this optic is very, very small. This optic is designed for micro compact pistols like this P365XL, uh, the Hellcat, m &P shields, things like that. Uh, next feature is it features a 50,000 hour battery life, a super, super, long it has a multi reticle design it has either a dot a circle or a circle with a dot the circle is 32 moa next feature is the shake awake technology so when you put this down for any extended period of time uh, the dot will come cut off but when you go to grab it or it senses any movement it will cut right back on it has 12 brightness settings two night vision 10 daylight brightness settings and they are super bright and the last feature i'm going to talk about really quick is this side battery tray let's move on to the in-hand impression okay so when we talk about the in-hand impression is you just bought it you took it out the box you just installed it got your lock tight on there and now you're starting to play around with it you know the fun part and one of the first things that i noticed and i was a little um concerned about this before because this is a very small dot and it's designed for very small pistols. Excuse me, it's a very small optic and it's designed for very small pistols like micro compacts. I was concerned about the window size and to my surprise, it's very comparable to a Trigicon RMR. Uh, it's actually a very generous window. Uh, the other thing about the window is it's not very curved. The reason why I like that is <clears throat> on some red dots, when it has a really curved window, that dot likes to jump around and move around a lot more. So I like the fact that the window isn't so curved. The window does, or the glass does, have a slight blue, blue tint, but it's not as blue as an RMR. When you actually compare them next to each other, you can see a difference. So for all the RMR fans out there, people that are used to using those, does still have a little blue tint, but nowhere near as much. It does have a very nice fit on the gun. When you look at this, it's just a slight amount of overhang on each side, but as far as the design is concerned, they did an excellent, excellent job with this. Really, really like it. So again, this optic designed for micro compacts right out of the box, it will fit on P365XLs. For the Hellcat owners, you have to do some slight modifications. Um, back to the multi-reticle design. I want to spend just a little second on this. It's got three options with the 507K. You have just a two MOA dot, 32 MOA circle, or 32 MOA circle with the two MOA dot in the, in the center. Now, prior to this optic, the only experience that I really had with holographic type sights or circle dots, circles with dots were back in the EOTech, EOTech days, or my EOTech days, uh, back when I was contracting. Since then, I've only used dots, whether it's two MOA, one MOA, 3.25, rifle or pistol. I was definitely thinking that that was gonna be the case when I purchased this one. So when I put it on, doing my little in hand, I'm doing some dry fire, bringing it up, presenting the gun, okay. Had the dot on, I was like, okay, it looks pretty good. Um, then I went, all right, let me try the circle. Put the circle on, didn't think I was gonna like it, but I was like, man, that circle sure is a lot easier to pick up on than just a small two MOA dot. Then I changed it to the 32 MOA circle with the dot in the center, and oh wow, super easy to pick up. Again, I was just doing a dry fire, but it, I noticed that it was very easy to pick up. 
I had a lot more feedback. It's just so much easier to pick up a big circle with a dot. Now I still had, you know, a couple reservations about it. And I was like, all right, I'll continue my dry fire, but we're gonna find out live tomorrow or the next day. Um, so that's what I did. I waited until the next day and I'll get to it in a second. The next thing I wanted to talk about, or I should say I noticed with my in-hand impression were the buttons here on the side. This is how you control I want you to see this here. There we go, nice and focused. Uh, I want you to see these buttons here. Um, that's how you control the brightness. You have a positive and negative. Um, again, 12 brightness settings in total, two for night vision, 10 for daylight. Um, but not only do they control the brightness, if you hold down the negative, it cycles through the different uh, reticles, the dot, the circle, and the circle and the dot. And then I believe if you hold the positive, it goes, it switches from the auto dimming feature to a manual dimming. I prefer the manual and it does something else I can't remember, but that's it for the in-hand impression. Let's move on to the performance. So first thing I noticed right uh, after I got to the range is I needed to zero the optic. Um, the first thing I noticed is that it comes with a tool, all right? And the cool thing about the tool is that you'll use this tool to uh, take this battery tray out. You also use the tool to adjust your windage and elevation for zeroing. Really nice. That tool, I would highly recommend you throw it in your, your range bag um, after you zero, but super easy to zero. Very, very easy to zero. In fact, uh, every little adjustment, as long as it's not too loud in the range, you can definitely hear it, but more importantly than that, you can feel it. Um, there are optics that cost twice as much money than these, than this uh, 507K, um, and you cannot feel or hear the adjustment. So I really, really like that, and it made zeroing this optic much, much easier. Second thing that I noticed is that the reticle is very bright. And you'll see the footage here. I was filming on a very bright day. We're here in Atlanta, Georgia. It's always hot and sunny, uh, but the 10 brightness settings are actually bright enough to see on the brightest days, which is awesome. Again, there are optics that cost two and three times the price of this 507K that can't even do that. Second thing, and I'm still talking about the brightness, is that the increments in the brightness was actually very, very good. A lot of times what you'll find is from the lowest brightness setting to about that middle setting, you'll have some really good increments in there. But usually after that middle setting uh, up to the brightest, you'll go from middle, oh, kind of bright, and then too bright. What I loved about it is that the increments were very graduated and there's a really good chance that you're gonna find the brightness setting for you. Back to the window size, um, shooting it live, the window size was not an issue at all. The curvature of the window was not uh, an issue at all as well. Um, and the tint, the, the slight blue tint, it was not an issue. As a matter of fact, you don't even notice it anymore. Um, if you got both the eyes open and you're bringing that red dot up and you're putting it on top of the, on top of the target, you're not going to notice it, or at least I didn't. Um, back to the reticle, I absolutely thought it was amazing. Remember, I was talking about the in-hand impression when I was doing it dry, and I was impressed, but completely surprised. That all transferred to the range. Coming out of the holster, coming up, acquiring the dot, so much easier to acquire, so much easier to track. So on those follow-up shots, you know, if I'm shooting control pairs or three, four, five rounds at a time, you know, keeping the dot in the window was so easy because of the 32 MOA circle. Also, keeping up with where the dot was at was also very, very easy. Uh, target transitions, coming up on one target, firing around, transferring or transitioning to the next target is so easy to keep the dot in the window and at least know where it is in the window, even with your peripheral vision, because you know, the your eyes lead the way as you're tracking to the next target. I can start seeing the dot right here and it stops right where I need it to go. And I, I, I'm lending that to that 32 MOA circle with the dot. I am very, very impressed by that. Is it, in fact, I set up a drill. I had the two MOA dot mode on and I ran the drill four or five times and got my average shot well. Then I did the 32 MOA circle with the dot, same drill, ran it four or five times and got my average 
and my time was reduced by about three seconds. And I'm lending that to the fact that not only is it easier for me to pick up on the dot, track the dot, and know where the dot is in the window, but there's that self-confirmation that we always are looking for. We're trying to align the dot perfectly on the target, and then we're also subconsciously trying to put that dot dead center of the window. And I think that just because it's not a single dot and I'm using that circle in the dot, I can just put any part of that on the target and press the trigger and it's gonna hit. I'm gonna get my hit. And I noticed that I wasn't having to take that extra time trying to get that self-confirmation. Oh, is it perfect, right? We actually call it over-confirmation, but you got what I'm saying. And, and I, I definitely noticed the difference subconsciously when I went to the circle with the dot. So if you do get this, or if you get even like the 507 C's and, and the other optics that allow you to you know, switch between the reticles, try the circle with a dot. You might have good results like I did. The last thing that I was concerned about as far as the performance was concerned, specifically the reticle, especially going to that 32 MOA circle with the dot is I was like, okay, it might be really good for up close, self-defense distances and stuff like that, but what about long distance? What about 25, 50, or 100 yards? No issues. As a, as a matter of fact, after 50 yards, I could still put you know, the dot that's in the center of the circle on the head, had no issues. At 100 yards, I put a, the bottom of the circle um, at the head and got my hits very, very consistently. In fact, more consistently, than I normally do with like my 3.25 MOA dot in my RMRs. And I think it's because of that, that 32 MOA circle, I'm able to put it right on the head and it's giving me a good reference point every time and I can just press the shot and get the hits. Let's move on to the final thoughts. First thing, battery life, 50,000 hours, like 5.7 years. When it comes to dots on my pistols or my rifles, that is the gold standard and the minimum that I require. There are optics and red dots out there that I have purchased, installed, and then taken back because they did not you know, have a battery life that was in or around 50,000 hours. Now you're asking, you know, why do you need a battery that lasts 5.7 years? For most of these companies that are manufacturing red dots, It'll go 5.7 years, but it's about a middle setting or a low setting as far as the reticle um, brightness is concerned. Most of the time, that brightness is only gonna be good for nighttime shooting. So for the majority of us that are leaving our dots on throughout the day, you have to turn that brightness up just a little bit higher so you can see it during the day and also see it at night. So it's gonna greatly reduce the battery life. So I want something that's a minimum of 50,000 hours and then um, uh, also too, on top of that is I highly recommend that you change your battery once a year on your birthday. I actually have a reminder set in my phone. Uh, the next thing was the battery tray. This is huge. I want you guys to see this again. The reason why this is huge is because say like with a Trigicon RMR and their other uh, optics, including the Romeo Zero uh, that I had on this P365 XL before. In order to change the battery, I have to break loose uh, the bolts, which I have to break loose my Loctite, take the optic off, install the battery, put the optic back on, re-tighten it back down, re-Loctite it, let the Loctite cure, and then re-zero. Ain't nobody got time for that. With this, I don't have to do that. I take the included tool that they sent in the damn box, unscrew it, I can actually use the tool to pry the battery tray out, swap the 1632 battery, I'm back in service. Still, it's a good idea to confirm your zero, but I've never had any issues with that. Um, next thing that I really liked about it is the drop testing. If you wanna see how well it did, check out Sage Dynamics video. Aaron Cowan did an excellent video and he's an excellent instructor. He also teaches classes. So definitely check him out, it did good in his drop testing. Uh, the next thing, I really, really like that reticle, and, and I like that it, it was, it just happened. I, I was definitely thinking that I was going to go just to the 2 MOA reticle like I have with everything else in the past, but the 32 MOA circle with the dot is a game changer, especially for people that are having issues picking up on the dot, keeping it in the window, tracking it, things like that. The next thing is the price. You're talking like mid threes, low threes, the mid $300 range. For the feature set, <laughs> for what it offers, you really can't beat it. The price is amazing. Hard thing is finding one right now, but hey, check out Gables. 
uh, Kinsey's Optics also is gonna have some as well. Um, the reticle brightness, super, super bright. Like I mentioned earlier, there are optics out there that cost two and three times more money than this and can't even get as bright as this one. And it's only an issue, uh, or it's not an issue until you spend five to $800, $900 for an optic, and then you take it out to go shoot it and you're zeroing it and, and the, the dot can't even get bright enough for you. It's, it's a pain and it kind of pisses you off uh, just a little bit. Um, me personally, I think that Hollison knocked this out of the park with the 507K. Um, they definitely address an elite, a need. The micro compact market right now is exploding. So coming out with an optic like this is, is, is huge. I've really been looking forward to it for a long time. If you are on the fence about buying the 507, uh, 507K, I would say definitely go ahead and buy it. Buy it with confidence, in fact. But before you do that, do your own research. Don't just take my word for it to anybody else's. Do your own research till you get the, that warm and fuzzy feeling. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. If you want some more information about the 507K, check the description below. We hope that every one of you are having a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Just wanted to thank you guys so much for tuning in. For more content and shenanigans, hit us up on Facebook or Instagram or on our website, perfectusgroup.org. And since I know you guys are so awesome, hit that damn subscribe and like button. Love you guys and see you next time.